Let's have great weather in Southern California, not not this craziness. And people say global warming is is fake. They're all crazy. These six players have locked up $115,000 in prize money. They're playing for more than $565,000, a new Mercedes-Benz SLC Roadster, and the first automatic bid into the season-ending WPG Tournament of Champions. And the winner of this will assume the first place, or current first place, in the Hublot Player of the Year race. Yes, speaking of the Hublot Player of the Year race, as Craig Varnell picks up ace-king here, Simon Lamb limps in from a small blind. Craig raises. The Hugo Player of the Year race for season 17, we have some additional benefits to those that compete and then eventually go on to place. So in past years, the winner has gotten a custom watch from Hublo. Um, those things are absolutely amazing. I would love one. So Hublo, if you're listening, you know, just <laughs> slide up in those DMs and I'll give you my address and you can send it on over. Um, and then also accommodation at the uh, select WPT main tour stops throughout the upcoming season. Last season it was Art Papazian who won two events and then went on uh, to secure the WPT or the Hublo WPT player of the year title. This season, the top three finishers in that race will win $15,000 in tournament uh, buy-ins for first place, mm -hmm. 7,500 tournament buy-ins oh, for second place, and 2,500 for third place. So. That's in addition to the watch and the accommodations that, that you receive. The top three will get those prizes, and then those tournament buying credits can be used across any WPT global events, whether it's the WPT Main Tour, WPT Deep Stack, WPT 500. So we're trying to give back. As Matt Savage says, executive tour director of the World Poker Tour, we'd like to be the player-friendly tour as much as possible. You know, with these additional prizes, we hope to Give a little bit back to our players, number one. Uh, number two, create create a little bit of a more intriguing race, yes. you know. These past couple of years, last year with Art Papazian, he just had a big lead, only a couple of people could catch him uh, coming down the stretch. The year before that, Ben Zamani, ben Zamani same sort yes. of thing. He started off season uh, 15 just on an absolute tear. Um, no one could really catch him to the end. Just a couple of players, but they really needed a big performance in those last couple of events. Um, the same thing happened last year. So now you don't necessarily have to win to win a prize. You can come in third. Yeah, so absolutely. you're likely going to see 15, 20, maybe 30 players all have a shot uh, in those in those final couple of events of season 17, which is which is really cool. A way to give back, show our appreciation to players, and, and they have a chance uh, to win a little something for their consistency on the tour. Craig checks this river with Queen High playing the pair of fours on board. Jake bets his two pair. Are we gonna see another Queen High call here? Or what are we gonna I do? I don't know. It's against Jake, maybe not. I guess we are. I guess we are. See, you should have bet me that flight to Choctaw. I should have. I definitely should have. If you're interested in following along with the Hublot WPT Player of the Year race, if you go to WPT.com, on that main page, you're going to see a little bar underneath that rotator photo, and it's going to give you the current listing. So if you look there right now, you're probably going to see somebody else's name. Uh, we update that in real time. So based on pe how people had finished in this tournament, that's their current ranking. Um, as players bust out, you'll see whoever busts out six will most likely become the first place uh, avatar that you see there uh, but all throughout the year you can check the Hublot WPT player of the year race by going to WPT.com on that main page and don't forget to follow the World Poker Tour on Twitter Facebook and Instagram at World Poker Tour on Instagram at WPT on Twitter and then just type in World Poker Tour into your search box over on Facebook like us, follow us. We appreciate all of you, and all you of our fans. And you don't, you don't want to miss out because at WPT 500, we did uh, a promotion where yes, the WPT did. talent, uh, Matt Savage, Lynn Gilmartin, Vince Van Patten, Tony Dunst, all played in WPT 500. And uh, people who followed along uh, won a chance to win a piece of uh, their tournament winnings. 
So there's uh, always something that you can find when you follow WPT on any of those so social media platforms. And speaking of, uh, Shop WPT, the home to official World Poker Tour gear, is currently running a special promotion on its Instagram account, at Shop WPT over on Instagram. Uh, that promotion ends today at midnight uh, yeah. Pacific yeah. time, so <laughs> get on over there. You'll see the rules on, I believe it's the third post down if you look at their timeline. Um, you'll see featured is Ivy Tevez and Tuba Erken of our Royal Flush crew showing off a nice hat. ShopWPT.com for your official World Poker Tour gear, hats, hoodies, shirts, and more. I'm wearing one of the polos right now. You guys can't see me, but Sam can. Yes, and I can it's confirm. It's great. It's comfortable. It's very yes. light. A lot of this stuff is super high quality. So please check it out. That's ShopWPT.com. We got Jared in action here against men. A pair of queens on board. Check, check to the river. river Here we see the five of hearts. Jared's got this one locked up as long as he doesn't fold with two pair. Apologies for that background noise. We are in the middle of a casino. That does have a party pit, as they call it, yes. over on the other side. Lots of action here at Gardens. And two parrots. Yes. That one that bit me last year. I had to go to security and file a report because I started bleeding. <laughs> They made me. I didn't think I had to, but they made me. Probably didn't want me to sue them. Yeah. I'm tempted to ask what you did to make it fight you, but I... I was I trying to feed it. <laughs> the general manager here, Ron Sarabi, you know, said, great, just try and feed him. I did. It nipped me. It, was, it wasn't trying to bite me. It was trying to get the food, and it just right. nipped me. Yeah, what are you going to do, man? Last year, bit by a parrot. This year, lost my phone. It's been, it's been, a, it's been a wild couple seasons <laughs> here, at, <laughs> here at Gardens for me. I don't, want, I don't know that I want to bring you to WPT Choctaw now. Well, it could just be a thing about gardens, you know. But this is a great venue. It is. I like it here. It's only about 30 minutes away from the uh, WPT headquarters. It is. It's true. So if we had a home casino, I mean, I guess this yeah. would be it. WPT did start at Bellagio back in 2002 with the Five Diamond World Poker Classic that is going to be coming up again this year for the 17th consecutive season in December. <laughs> Men win here with Queen Ten of Hearts. First to act. Five thousand is the opening raise from men. Sia with Jack Seven of Diamonds in the big blind. She makes the call. This just feels like one of those final tables where we're gonna have to wait a while for some really big action. You know, just. Players are deep. They all seem very confident and experienced, so no one's going to get too crazy until the blinds go up a little bit. Yeah. It's Ace, eight, six, two hearts in the flop. Check, bet, fold, and men takes it down. Another wave to his fans. And here at the final table, I know we were talking about the action clock, but to let you know the levels. So at official WPT, final tables, which is six-handed. Uh, levels are 60 minutes until the action gets heads up, and then that will change to 30-minute levels. Mike Pham on Facebook asked if there's been any I-do-nothing plays yet from men win. There have not been at this final table. I have not seen him take any Coronas, sips of a Corona yet. Mm -hmm. Maybe that'll come later. We'll see what happens. But yes, yesterday was a very eventful day with Men the Master, who turned into Men the Napper. 
as BJ Nemeth yes. and so and eloquently in the live update section. If you weren't following the action yesterday, if you go to WPT.com, look yeah, at the live updates. Go back and read it. And you can read the, the hands that led up to. And don't be surprised by the timestamp. Yes, we did finish it around 4 a.m. But I like that. I like that poker is an endurance game. Yes. This, this like, stop and play with three or four players left. I, no, I can't get with that. Keep going. At Absolutely. least, you know, I mean, there's certain times when you're playing down to a final table, you play to the final table. Yes. When you're playing down to a winner, you play to a winner. I know some people will disagree with me. Players might not like that, but I think the, the endurance factor uh, certainly comes into play for poker and should come into play. What, what adds to the fabric of the game? It does. Get a three bet here from Sai, who picked up two jacks. She made it 550,000 to go. Simon's been quiet after a fairly active start. He lost the first couple opening pots that he played, then he won a couple big ones to, to move back up the leaderboard. He's been quiet since. He gives this one up, and Sai takes it down. It is something that, I, going back to what you were saying, Donnie, about the timing aspect, it reminds me a little bit of baseball, that there is no clock um, well, yeah, in, in terms baseball of... Baseball is the worst. Well, I'm not debating that, but I'm <laughs> what I'm saying is <laughs> in in terms of, uh, like, the story you have, oh, we played until 4 o'clock. Like there's something that starts to transcend the game, and uh, what was happening the other night and the way that the team was able to stay resilient and focus on this and, and capture what happened... Um, I think it does. It, it adds an element into the game of poker. Yeah, I mean, last night you, you saw it. It was an example. I mean, men literally fell asleep at the table. They ha He had to, you know, the dealer was folding his hand. The action clock was serving as an alarm clock. I mean, it was it was something that, that I mean, I've seen a lot in poker. You've seen a lot in mm -hmm. poker. That was the first. Yeah. He was out cold. We put some uh, some Twitter or photos and video up. Um, I tweeted some stuff out last night at Donnie underscore Peters. If you guys want to check that out. And then, as Sam said earlier, there is some stuff over at the WPT.com live update section. Check that out as well as Craig takes this pot down with two tens. Craig's been pretty active for coming in with the short stack, but he did start with more than 30 big blinds, mm -hmm. so... Enough maneuverability for his liking. Don't let his lack of actual physical chips fool you. Yes. Right there next to Jake Schindler's mountain. Craig does have a fair amount of play. Saya here opens up with a raise to 180,000 with ace six offsuit. Saya is originally from China. She now resides here locally. She calls the Gardens Casino her home casino. She plays cash games regularly. Only been playing tournaments for the past year or so. Coming into this event, uh, $187,000 in live tournament earnings. Still, for just coming old. into tournament to have 187, I mean, that's still pretty impressive. Yes. 31 years old. She was the chip leader entering day four when there was 46 players left. Uh, one of two female players who were left. The other one was Kitty Kuo, who uh, came second to Darren Elias when he won his record-breaking fourth title at last season's WPT Bobby Baldwin Classic, the final event of the season, right before TOC. Uh, Kitty ended up finishing in 10th place in this event, leaving Saya as the only woman remaining. Thank you. 
So we are looking at the uh, comments in the live stream. If you have questions for us, uh, feel free to send that in. Uh, always, I'm always curious uh, where people are from that are watching. So if you want to shout out there in the comments of, of where you're watching the stream from, we also we we oftentimes get somebody halfway around the world that's tuned in yeah, to watch. Yeah, let us know. Let us know where you're checking us out from. Tom Wheaton's in the chat. Tom Wheaton, founder and CEO of Faded Spade Cards, the preferred playing cards of the World Poker Tour. Tom just mentioned that he was knocked out of the WPT Bobby Baldwin Classic by Kitty Quo in 19th place. Mm. Tom raised money uh, through an online staking forum, bought into the $10,000 buy-in event, the largest buy-in of his poker career. Ended up running that up to a, uh, to a nice cash for all of his investors and himself. And took some of that money, took some of that money, time. decided to create some four-color decks, yeah. and uh, those are for sale now. You can check those out at FadedSpade.com. Don't forget to use the code WPT for 20% off. I know Jason Somerville is a big fan. A lot of you guys out there that are watching the stream know about Jason Somerville. All of his efforts uh, you know, to really grow the game of poker through streaming. He does a lot of stuff through Twitch, through his Run It Up channel. He's a big fan of these four-color decks coming from Faded Spade. So get your hands on some. I have some. They're great. Red, black, green, blue just like you see on the screen here of this live stream from the WPT Gardens main event final table. We saw men there yeah, use a time extension chip. Uh, that's for an additional 30 seconds on the action clock. If you're just joining us, uh, the final table is using a big blind anti-format as well as the action yeah, clock close. where each player has 30 seconds to make a decision. And they, have, they all started with eight 30 second time extension chips if they need additional time to think. We got a lot of locations coming in, Sam. We got New York City, we got Philadelphia, Mesa, Arizona, the UK, oh, Nebraska. Right. Only 30 minutes away in Nebraska. UK, it's a, it's almost it's after midnight. Up. Pittsburgh, PA, Vancouver. Another one from Philadelphia. We got Louisiana, Connecticut, Orlando. Nice. Tons of stuff. Here you guys see the chip count. Simon Lamb on top, 5.5 million. He started the day as the final table chip leader and men the win. Men the master win has chipped up to move into second place here. New Zealand. All New right. New Zealand, Anthony Trott from Zealand. What's up, Anthony? Thank you for tuning in. WPT was recently in New Zealand. Just morning there in New Zealand, isn't it? 17 hours ahead? Yeah, I have no, no idea. It's a different day. It's, it's all weird. Well, it's oh, flushed, that's true. It's technically the other way. Friday. It's, it's just crazy. Just kidding. I love New Zealand. We thank you for waking up early, uh, whoever was in. Uh, Seattle, California, maybe right down the road. Panama. That's Another Philadelphia. Love. We got Mississippi. We got Dallas, Texas. Hey, Dallas, Texas. Short drive up to uh, WPT Choctaw. Get in there. San Antonio, Texas. Hopefully another one. Melbourne, Australia. My favorite place in the world. Mm. Chicago. Another one from New Zealand. Thank you all for letting us know. It's yeah, this is great. El Salvador, Denmark, Florida, North Carolina. That's that's what I love Another too. Australia, Queensland, Australia, Tampa, Florida. You see how universal the game is. It just poker is a truly global game. That is for sure. Men raised here with seven four off to one hundred eighty thousand. Jared's coming along with ace eight of clubs. Ace jack three, two diamonds. It's 2.15 a.m. in the U.K. And Brian Ewell is at work. What? Well, we're glad we're, we could join you. <laughs> keep, you keep you awake. Check from Jared here with top pair. Men's going to bet 230000 Jared makes the call. We're going to the turn. Deuce of hearts. Two diamonds, two hearts.
You don't need to adjust your laptops or phones. Um, that screen behind Men the Master, there was some technical difficulty there. Um, we Technology, are man, this, this yeah. stuff never works. We are coming to you on a 30-minute delay, so we're seeing at the same time you are. Um, that has since been resolved, so in about 30 minutes' time, you'll see it fixed. Well, probably less than that. But. Ten of diamonds on the river here. Jared will not be losing his hand unless he folds. Garden's calling those uh, chips lemonade and Simon's Don't ice cream like company. I'm like, me, but I'm like you know. craving something sweet. <laughs> Jared checks his top pair over to men. Men cannot win unless he bets. Men bet and he does. He fires a bet of 450,000. See Angelica Hale in the chat here saying good day from Melbourne, Australia. Good Angelica day. Hale, VP of Global Tour Management for the World Poker Tour. What's up, Ange? How you doing? Ten seconds. There's some straight draws out there, a possible flush draws coming. Here Jared's going to use a time chip time here attention. to get an additional 30 seconds. Now you notice that men is in second place there, but has fewer oh, chips. Jared gives oh. it up. <laughs> the, the reason for that is in real time, that count is being updated. So whatever men had put out, that's how many chips he has behind. Yes. So just didn't want anybody to, to wonder why the amounts seemed off. Men takes it down. He's getting up there. He's just a couple hundred thousand short of Simon Lamb. The 63-year-old be going to the winner. That's not the only thing that Gardens uh, added to this event. They also added $200,000 in cash to the prize pool. So total $250,000 when you get $200,000 cash and then the 50k for the car. The Bringing the prize pool up to uh, $2.944 million for this opening event of Season 17 of the WPT. The other part that they added, which I think really helped the, the turnout, 484 entries, is their satellite program. 584. 584, sorry. Thanks for correcting me. Um, is their satellite system. So they guaranteed 40 seats into the main event, and I believe the, and you'll correct me if I'm wrong on there, I believe it was 54 seats. You uh, are correct. We're actually the same. Yes. correct you on that one. I redeemed seats. myself. Yeah. A couple players uh, ran pretty deep in this event. Uh, Jin Hao Han. Uh, made the final two tables, I believe, yes. final two or three tables, and then Samir Aljanidi also uh, ran very deep with a nice cash as well. Uh, most of the satellites were for $100, mm -hmm. so anyone that was able to turn a satellite into a cash in this event um, definitely profited relatively nicely uh, given the investment that they put in, in those satellites. So great to see the L.A. and Southern California area is always just really good for for poker and for satellite entries into big main events you see it a lot over at the lapc you've seen it at the bike in years past you see it now here at the gardens so really good area really good region for poker here you've got men win with an open-ended straight draw on the 1084 flop of jack nine against jake with ace queen Men's going to bet 200,000. Ten seconds to make. Jake makes the call. Jake Turn to the six of hearts. Jake is still in the lead with ace high, but men is as live as they come. Yes. Open-ended straight draw, flush draw. He doesn't know it, but even if he gets this 
Paris is Jack or the Nine. Mm -hmm. He'll check over to Jake. Jake, Jake okay. checks behind. River is a six of clubs. Men checks again, and Jake checks. And shows the jack of hearts, nine of hearts. Jake shows ace of clubs, queen of clubs. Jake takes it down Jake with ace hop. Keeps spilling with the staff. ace of faded spades. Yeah, ace of spades. In a chip, Simon's fallen back into second place. And then at the bottom of the leaderboard, Craig Varnell started with 1.955 million. He's chipped up to more than two million now. Simon here picks up a pair of eight. Raise 140,000. He makes it 140,000, as you heard from the dealer there. I'm sure Craig would love to play the 7 6 suited. Mm -hmm. I just feel that Jake is in a really perfect situation here because Simon might not get out of line because he thinks Craig, Craig might push uh, with the short stack, but then Jake has the benefit of just letting them do what they do and then he'll assess it and then play against the rest of the table. Yep, that's definitely. that's how he has, without really putting himself in jeopardy, assumed the chip lead. Craig gives up his suited connectors and it's over to Jake, who looks like he's got a little bit of something cooking up here. He's coming in with three bets. Three reasons. 425,000. He's at 425. This kind of goes along with the theme of what's been happening so far. Players seem to be t picking on Simon a little bit. Simon makes the call. Simon calls. Two players for the block. Nice big pot of one million here going to the flop between Simon and Jake. Simon will be first to act. Jack 9-9 nine, nine with two diamonds on the flop. Simon maintains his lead and checks. Jake throws out 375,000. Simon makes a call, shoots a look over at Jake. And we're going to the turn. Three of clubs on the turn. Simon maintains the lead and checks. We'll see if Jake keeps up the aggression here. Jake slows down, checks behind. And on both of those streets, it's like Jake is getting into a rhythm here. Ter 10 seconds, the action yep. clock went down to 10 seconds each time. There's no really long tanking. He's taking about 20 seconds, but uh, not giving anything away in terms of his timing. Five of diamonds here on the river brings in a possible flush draw. Simon checks. Jake checks. Simon shows Simon's two eights are going to take this one down. Hearts, nice pot for him to get that trend line moving back in the right direction, <laughs> especially against Jake, who's chipped up nicely and overtaken him. And you know, yes. clear. Still not a lot of chatter at this final table, but 
the players are smiling a bit more, yeah. lightening up a bit. Probably shaking off those cobwebs from a very late night last night. Men here, ace five suited, <laughs> of clubs. He puts in a raise. Attempts to make it 150,000, but he can't. He has to make it at least 160,000. Normally, not necessarily worth mentioning too much, but yesterday there were some instances there were a couple, yes. when men was announcing raise amounts that had really nothing to do with the action. At one point, he announced 14, and somebody had already raised much more than 14,000 before him. Another time, he announced 38,000 when there was a raise to 60,000 in front mm -hmm. of him. And at the time that he announced 38,000, he was he announced 38. He didn't say thousand. He just said 38. Um, and then he put out 140,000 in chips. So it was just really confusing. Mm -hmm. and then the floor was called. He proceeded to argue with the floor. And things ended up turning into a debate. You know, off to the side of the table. The floor staff pulled him aside. He ended up getting a one-round penalty. Uh, he had been warned several times yesterday. That was one of the instances yesterday that led to eventually men getting cut off from being served alcohol. Four-way action here. King Jack Five Rainbow Flop. Men is in the lead with Ace Five of Clubs for bottom pair. Backdoor flush draw. Everybody checks. Turn, card is the ten Turn is the ten of spades. Jake Men check. still out in front. Jared Doesn't really look like anyone wants this pot. No. Jake and Jared both check. Men, Men check. did pick up a Broadway straight draw. He also checks. Simon checks. And Simon checks. Simon checks. We're playing checkers, Donnie. <laughs> I like it. River card is seven, seven of diamonds on the river. Jake is first to act. Ten seconds. Jake checks. Jake thinks Jared till. Checks. The 10 second warning and then check. Jared checks. Men's going to take down this pot. Pair of fives. Four way pot Man going his way. He looks thrilled. There you go. There it is. There's the fist pump. I know players will talk about balancing their range in terms of what they're holding in their hands, but and I've seen this with Jake before. It, in situations like this, you'll notice that he keeps waiting until. Pretty soon we're going to bring in Dave Farah here, who's going to be joining us to take over the commentary from me and Sam. Yeah, He's Sam and I joining us from Las Vegas. Fabulous, Las Vegas. Yeah. Craig here, King Jack off. One hundred and eighty thousand. Craig's got the momentum, man. I mean, this is, look at this. He's coming in with a raise again. One hundred eighty thousand to go. Jared Bolts, by a bolt. Men with ace queen here. There might be some fireworks here. He is in the big blind. Adjust his chips. 
sets his cards, gives him another peek. Ten seconds remaining. One hundred and eighty thousand. Three, two, oh. Makes a call. Might have three bet there, but it seemed like he was under a little bit of stress, uh, time crunch there. Mm -hmm. You heard the dealer there announce 10 seconds. Man asked for the raise amount, he got it, and then looked back at his chips and then ended up just throwing in the chips mm -hmm. to make the call. So maybe wanted to three bet, but didn't have the time to do it. Top pair here for men. He checks over to Craig with second pair. That's 180,000. So with men just calling pre-flop too, that Craig probably doesn't think he has an ace in a hand. Men calls. Men calls. Turn is the ace of hearts, giving men men three of a kind. This is really going to be hidden because, like you had said, maybe because of the time crunch, he just called instead of three yes. betting, and now this is really well hidden. He checks again over to Craig, who likes okay. to check behind. Something doesn't feel right. River Ten of spades, spades on the river. Men checks, getting a little tricky still. 340,000 is the bet from Craig. Men makes the call. Craig shows King of Spades, Jack of Clubs for Oh, hey, Jesse. Men also flashes the ace. Yes. Oh, there you are. With Spades. the end of that hand, we're going to be Queen bringing in Dave Farah and Jesse Sylvia. How are you guys? It's like a pretty big hand there for, for Men the Master. It is pretty big yeah, hand there. It's a really nice the pot either way. Um, I'm a scary ace ten. And we welcome you back to the action. Dave Fair, Jesse Sylvia here in Las Vegas. Still six-handed at the WPT seven, uh, Season 17 kickoff at the Gardens in Southern California. Men starting it out by raising to 225000 to go with his ace-queen off. Craig going to come along with his pocket sixes. All right, so taking a look at Craig's call, it looks like these blue and white chips are worth 100000 and the black chips are worth 25000 so that'll give us some kind of idea of the stack sizes as we go forward. Jake contemplating what to do here with his king 10 off on the button. Yeah, this is a the type of hand that's a little too weak to call. Now Jake on the button uh, might want to call anyways because he's quite good and he's in position. But a, a lot of players may choose to take this hand and uh, make a big re-raise with it and try to win the pot now. And then you have decent cards if you do get called. but. Playing multi-way with a hand like this, it's, it's quite difficult because you often flop the second best hand or the third best hand, but it looks like a pretty good hand. 
Jared in small blind with pocket threes is going to make the call as well. Now, if Jake had something like King-10 suited, it would be a very easy call. It's just something like King-10 offsuit could go either way. So. And the flop, we have seven, eight, nine all diamonds. There are a couple of diamonds out there. Craig with his pocket sixes has himself a straight flush draw, an open-ended one. We've actually got two straight flush draws here because Jake has the top end of it. They can both they both have one card. They think they have two for the straight flush, but and then men has the best flush draw in general. So it'll be it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. It looks like it may check around here unless Craig decides to Oh, Jake's gonna take a shot at it. Okay. Jake with a bet of 275,000. The pocket three is getting out of the way. Over to Mend the Master. 75 to go. And it's a close spot for the Mend the Master. I imagine he's going to put the chips in because it's a very small bet by Jake. It's only around a quarter of the pot. That said, he has a hand that makes the second best hand when a diamond comes off a reasonable amount at a time. So it's a little scary taking a flop. But when he's getting a price like this and he has... Uh, pretty good flush draw on two over cards it's kind of a no-brainer now this is a weird spot for craig because once there's a call he has to imagine that his diamond draw isn't good very often so he really feels uncomfortable on every diamond that's not the five of diamonds so he, he makes a good fold and i like that and he's he's quite short his his call preflop was fairly thin that's a jack of hearts and all of a sudden things get even more interesting jake now with a straight yeah, that's a great card for Jake. He has to imagine his hand is good at this point. Um, he's going to bet here, I imagine, for value and a little bit of protection. And men's actually improved, so he might get a call out of men from the worst hand and get a little bit more value out of him than he would have on some other cards. Like, let's say that, you know, a six came off. Jake probably wouldn't get any more chips out of men, but the fact that men turns a straight draw as well might keep him in the pot, especially if Jake chooses to go smaller. Thank you. Okay, so, so it's going to go 10 seconds. Jake with a pocket three. Jake with a pocket three. Little discussion there at the table about whose action it was. How much time was being used? Men does, in fact, make the check. I don't know if he's trying to get in people's heads or if he does this stuff because he thinks that people are actually hiding their chips. But men has a lot of very odd mannerisms at the table. And, mm -hmm. uh, a player lesser than Jake, these mannerisms might get under that player's skin and bother them. But, Frustrating, you know, yeah, sure. Yeah, Jake's been playing live poker for many years. He, he's seen all walks and of life type of people, so... I don't think this is he's not the guy who's going to get too upset about you know somebody telling him to move his hand or somebody acting on a turn or whatever men with the deuce of hearts on the river does not improve he is going to check jake will win the hand if this goes to showdown yeah and what's going to end up happening is jake's going to bet here and men's going to fold there's just no way you can call this hand although i mean if men made a check raise it'd be a really sweet spot to run the check raise as a bluff that said, I pretty scary have... board to be check raising on. Yeah, well, when when Jake checks back the turn, we can expect that he has very few flushes. Probably not too too many straights. Although we know he can have some straights because he checked back King Ten. Um, and for those reasons, uh, you know, men could go for a check raise. I have a very strong feeling like he's just going to fold his hand. But if he did check raise, Jake would be in an incredibly tough spot. And you're exactly right. Men's going to let that one go. And pot is going the way of Jake, adding over 